With everything going on in the world today, some of you are deeply concerned, very concerned, but I just want to encourage your heart that God has not arrived at this moment in time unprepared. God the Father is the provider and He is pre prepared. He is our shelter in the storm. God is able to take us through anything that the world throws against us. God is our source of overcoming. He is our source of truth. He is our refuge and our high tower. So let's just pray as we get into this word of God for us today. Precious Heavenly Father, we believe we receive your precious Holy Spirit that you spoke about in Joel chapter 2 when you said you would pour out your Spirit upon your sons and daughters and that you would give us words, communication to prophesy into our future. Jesus said in John 16 that the Holy Spirit would show us things to come. We believe we receive that help right now from you, precious Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Pray with results. Part four. Here we are. We're talking about power. Don't let go results. That's what we want. You know, this has been such a powerful, exciting series, and it's also a very challenging topic for many of us because our prayers, they're personal. They're private. Often they're unique as our fingerprint. There's so much to learn about prayer, but this series in particular is on power, P-W-R, pray with results. For some, this can be so painful. If they feel like they didn't get the life-saving answer they asked God for, did God delay too long? Did he defer or even deny them his help? And yet the Bible says God's promises are yes and amen. So be it. It, is it possible that God isn't the variable in the power of life, but it's us? I say this tenderly because many of us are dealing with deep hurts, deep loss. God wants to empower you, but it will most likely require correction to our beliefs, your beliefs, our faith. I hope and pray as you review the principles of this series, you're encouraged that power is truly God's will for you when you pray. No matter what it is, you can pray with results, heavenly results. You may have a child who needs God's results. You may have a marriage or a parent that needs miraculous help. You may know someone who needs a healing, freedom from an addiction, forgiveness for a mistake, an answer to the impossible. Yes, you, my friend, can pray with results. I've got a true story that I'm gonna share with you shortly that I believe is gonna absolutely amaze you. Evidence talks just like empty. Empty has the ability to drive people to make bad choices, evil choices, but good evidence is persuasive. Good results talk and have the ability to lead others to want the very same. David Green, you might have heard that name, but he's the founder and the CEO of the company, the business Hobby Lobby. For me, he said, my source of truth has always been prayer and the Bible. I truly believe that if leaders pray and seek truth from the Bible, that their business will be revolutionized, he said. He went on and said, I realize that all my success has come from God. My wife Barbara and I had started this business with $600, a $600 loan, and I don't think anyone would have bet on us to become successful. But from the beginning, he goes on, the very beginning, our purpose was to honor God in all that we did. We worked hard and listen to this, God gave the results. God gave the results. We're back to pray with results, with outcome. My grandfather used to say it like this. He said, you know what, Stephen? He said, the proof is in the pudding. The late Dr. Miles Monroe, an amazing pastor, preacher, teacher, he said this, he said, prayer is our invitation to God to intervene in the affairs of earth. It is our request for him to work his ways in this world. Did you hear that? His ways, God's ways are a million times better than our ways. But prayer is necessary to get that divine interference. As we sum up a few major truths uncovered in this series, Pray With Results, I want to encourage you to review parts one, two, and three. 
Prayer is essential to your life. We all need God's help and guidance. Prayer in the name of Jesus is supercharged communication with God, the Father, which must get results. It must. Why? Because as we've learned in Hebrews 11:6, 6, that without faith, it's impossible. Say that word, impossible. It's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Rewarder. Ah, there's a sticky word for a lot of religious people. You see, they want to define faith by their traditions or their convenience or their preferences. There's a comedian, his name is Emo Phillips, and he once said this in a routine. He said, I asked God for a bike, but I know God doesn't work that way. So I stole the bike and I asked God for forgiveness. You know, that's a little bit humorous, but... Sadly, it's kind of typical of our ignorance of God's goodness. God wants us all to get his rewards. He wants to give us the bike. He sent Jesus so that we can pray powerful prayers with outcome. Not because of our rightness. Do you get that? Not because of our goodness, but because of Jesus' righteousness. Mark Twain used to say this. He said, heaven goes by favor. If it went by merit, you would stay out and your dog would go in. <laughs> he's got a point, and, but in that, that same favor and grace of God that he's talking about applies to the impact of our prayers. Time doesn't permit in this series for me to go into all the different types of prayers that we can pray, but the topic at hand is results. Yes, God is honored when you pray with results. He's honored by that. The world is a better place when you pray with results. People, family are better off when you pray with results. And I could also point out that God is not pleased with no results. Zero outcome, just vanity. Look at Matthew 15 verse 9. Uselessly do they worship me, for they teach as doctrines the commands of men. That's substitution. Jesus was saying, Isaiah spoke of a people that approached God with prayer words, but held their heart far away from God. Jesus confirmed that that's useless. Broke down vain prayers and worship. But true faith makes it all about God's goodness instead of our fake version of goodness. Look at Romans 2 verse 4. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? It leads me to repentance. Faith in what? His goodness. You see, people don't want what we have unless what we have is a whole lot better than what they have. You see, that's pretty simple. The kingdom of God is not a faulty system or an exercise in futility. God knows that people need and want the real thing, the real stuff. People don't want futile religion. Not really. Once again, Dr. Miles Monroe said, When man fell from grace, he lost a kingdom, not a religion. Therefore, mankind's search is not for a religion or for even heaven, but for his kingdom. Yes, a lot of people turn to religion because it offers a sense of control in exchange for personal sacrifice. Think of it. We lost dominion, so we use religion to strangely get control. Many are drawn to the idea of gaining spiritual equity in exchange for their own sacrifice. It deceives us into believing that we have control of our destiny. We get fooled by the idea that we can perform our way into pleasing God. But here's the blunt force truth. Romans 3, starting at verse 10. As it is written, none is righteous, just and truthful and upright and conscientious. No, not one. No one understands. No one intelligently discerns or comprehends. No one seeks out God. All have turned aside. Together, they have gone wrong and have become unprofitable and worthless. No one does right, not even one. Wow, that's pretty absolute. Look at those words, unprofitable and worthless. It's, it implies that there's no proof in the pudding, like my grandfather would say. Cain, Adam and Eve's... Um, firstborn son, Cain made a sacrifice unto God, the one true God, and guess what? 
It was not acceptable. Not everything offered, sacrificed, done for God is approved or sanctioned or accepted by God. Why? Because as you already know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Therefore, if you do not pray in faith, then your prayer cannot please God. My prayer can't please God without faith. Cain prayed and got zero results. So he pouted, he hated, and then he murdered his brother Abel. If we don't get answers, our carnal nature tends to panic and put extreme pressure on others, religious pressure on others, our brother, our sister. We demand their sacrifice so that we can get fulfilled. My friend, that's antichrist. It's disloyalty to God and it's faithless. This is why this is so absolutely critical to life, to be able to pray with results. Your kids need to be a witness to you praying with results. Your spouse should be encouraged as they watch you pray with results. I gave you a list of 10 ultra simple two word prayers. There's no performance to speak of in that. Anyone can do it. You might say, well, but Pastor Stephen, isn't it about how much faith we have? Jesus said, even if we put a tiny bit of faith, the size of a tiny mustard seed to work, we could move mountains, have wind and waves obey us. And yes, please God, not because of our performance, no, but because of our trust, our reliance on him. Faith needs to be worked, needs to be employed. It's gotta be switched on. Look at this famous and often abused verse, James 2 verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now, too many people use this verse to promote a works-based salvation. That's dangerous. God's word doesn't contradict itself. The apostle James is not contradicting Paul who wrote in Romans 4 verse 5, but to the one who does not work, that is the one who does not try to earn his salvation by doing good, but believes and completely trusts in him, talking about Jesus, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited to him as righteousness. So what is James saying by the Holy Spirit that faith without works is dead? What's he saying? He's saying that faith that's not put to work is dormant, as good as dead, off. James is saying that faith that doesn't work, doesn't work. It does nothing. Jesus said in Mark 11, he said that if you had faith, you would say, we've got to work our faith. You've got to say something. You've got to pray something. Use one of those two word prayers and legislate a little bit of heaven here on earth. We don't pray or we don't say because the truth is we really don't believe. Why don't we believe? Because our repetition gets stuck on tradition, doubt, unbelief, even stupid. How can you believe something you really don't know? Oh, I've heard that Bible verse before, Pastor Stephen. Well, you've heard it with your head, but now you gotta let it down in your heart because Romans 10, 10 says, with the heart man believes. You can't believe with your head, you believe with your heart. God's word must get in your heart or it's just religious script in the wind. The cultural crows of the day will eat it and you're back to swipe up, swipe left, and your future falls further away from your God-ordained destiny. Several years ago, Pam needed emergency surgery. We didn't know what was wrong, but it was a crisis. She couldn't eat at all, and this had gone on for two weeks. She's already small, as you know, and this was getting really serious. She was starving and very sick. I was fighting fear by praying. I called on God for help. I was praying some two-word prayers. Help Pam. Heal Pam. In the name of Jesus, heal her. Now, here's James 2, 26 at work. As the surgeon was getting ready to operate on her, we had one last consultation. We prayed, asked God for his oversight, and then I released Pam to the care of the doctor that God had led us to. I let go. I didn't try to go into the oper room, operating room and say, well, now I love my wife more than you guys, so, so let me do this surgery. No, that would have been foolish. I worked my faith and I let go. That was the corresponding action to my faith, letting go. That was working faith. Some of you parents right now, you need to put faith to work and get out of the way. 
Some of you are praying for spouses, maybe your parents, loved ones, but you're trying to do the operation. You're in the way of faith instead of working faith. When you have a power tool, you plug it in, that's corresponding action, and you pull the trigger, but you stay out of the way of that spinning blade. Get out of the way. Work faith, but get out of the way. Faith may need to make an incision. Could it be that you're not getting results because you're truly not letting faith operate? The key here is corresponding action. Faith requires corresponding action. If you believe God wants you to have the job, but you don't show up for the interview, that's not working your faith. The corresponding action is not operating yet. Therefore, faith is dead. It's off. Nothing turns off faith like vain religion and man-made traditions. So why would we substitute getting results for religion? Remember, the enemy is a counterfeiter. He substitutes something real with something fake. Let me give you a sequence of truth here from God's word about power. Isaiah 40 verse 29 says, He gives strength to the weary, and to him who has no might, he increases power. Who gets strength and power? The humble. You have to acknowledge the need, the weakness to receive his giving. This is why fasting can be so crucial. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves of how truly weak and weary we are in the flesh without Christ. We are dependent on him. Look what Daniel, a high-ranking politician and prophet said in prayer. Daniel 2 verse 23. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers, for you have given me wisdom and power. Even now you have made known to me what we requested of you, for you have made known to us the solution to the king's matter, the king's mystery. Daniel is famous for his wisdom and also his fasting with prayer. He used fasting as a tool to lower the noise of his flesh and intensify his focus on God's voice. Remember, fasting doesn't impress God. Faith pleases God. Also notice how power and wisdom abide together. They're a set. They go together. If you try to pray without wisdom, you should not be surprised to also realize you're not praying with power. You get zero results. Jesus said in Acts 1 verse 8, he said, but you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Remember, the Spirit is the Spirit of wisdom. Let's face it, we need help to pray. And Jesus said in John 15, that was what Holy Spirit does. He helps us. Like we read in James 4, we can ask him properly with wrong motives. That equals zero power. To pray with results is all about power. When you pray, it should manifest power. If you go to a prayer meeting, it should be about the release of heavenly power. If you're going to a prayer meeting and there is no power, you need to get out of there. God's not honored when there is no proof of his presence. Where God is, there's power, period. If there is no power, then you know something is going on that's dishonoring his presence. God's merciful and it can be corrected, but that's where humility comes in. Prayer does not increase power. It is the humble act of releasing power and engaging with God's presence to upload, to load up on power. It's increasing your faith that increases the potential for more of God's power. Prayer is a switch. Getting all fancy and eloquent doesn't make the power flow if there's no power there. No faith means no power. Remember, without faith, it's impossible to please God. It doesn't say without prayer, it's impossible. It doesn't say that. We pray without ceasing so that we can see God's power manifest and download His wisdom. Faith in Christ, that alone makes you His righteousness so that you can pray with results. It's possible to pray 18 hours a day and still only be a pretentious Pharisee. Jesus often referred to the religious leaders as offensive, deceivers, hypocrites. Ouch. On the flip side, you can pray 18 seconds and move mountains here on earth. Why? Because faith in God makes his great power available, not human effort. This is how we pray with results. Make it all about God's work and not about our effort, your effort. So let me share with you a pray with results story from my own life. From the time I can remember as a little boy, I began to see that my dad was a troubled soul. Like most kids, I love my dad. 
but I knew something was terribly wrong. This had such an impact on me that even as young as six years old, I was having full-blown panic attacks. My thyroid stopped working. I was struggling being able to sleep because of the anxiety. It's pointless to get into the details of his addictions and all the immorality that goes along with that lifestyle because that's not really the point of this story. You just need to know it was bad, really bad. It put our family in a cycle of going from one major crisis to another, trouble, poverty, sadness, and more pain. At a young age, my mom taught us to believe on Jesus for our help, for our salvation, and then to use our faith to pray for the people we loved, for our dad. We prayed that he would come to know Jesus, that the Lord would set him free from all of his addictions, his anger, his troubled life. Now, of course, over the years growing up, we had conversations with him about his destiny, his choices, and the truth that God's love was the answer. But it never seemed to matter much, though, because he would quickly crawl back into his world of lies and toxic, radical living. It seemed like our prayers were not heard, not answered. Was God listening? Things got worse, not better. It came to a point where circumstances became so dark, so deceptive, that we knew we had to part ways with him. We were not influencing him, not for good, and his decisions were biblically disqualifying any grounds for relationship. You see, relationships have requirements. A basic premise for agreement, honesty, mutual respect are a requirement. Yes, God has standards for your relationships. You're not your own. Amos 3 verse 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? We parted ways, but we never stopped praying for him. We would basically pray, Father, we commit dad into your hands. You're able to draw him to the truth and to yourself. We give him over to you in Jesus' name. And then the big part, we let go. Trusting God has this element of leaning on him and letting go. I told you in part three that there is a reciprocal action to life and faith. What you're willing to let go of determines what you're able to take hold of. Abraham, the patriarch, was asked by God to let go of his beautiful son whom he loved and he adored so that he could take hold of God's extraordinary promise for his future family. God used Abraham's faith in letting go to bless all the nations of the world. Faith has corresponding action. Let me pause my story for a moment. There's a lot of you who have loved ones, family, children, parents, even a husband or a wife that's lost in what looks like a hopeless state. They may be an alcoholic, some kind of addict, maybe an occult, narcissist, a criminal, a God-hating atheist or Marxist, sick. It doesn't matter how far they are or where they are, but it does matter where you stand. Step out of the cyclone and employ your faith to see God save them. Trust 1,000 times more in God than you do in yourself. There is hope, but don't live in the tide of hopelessness. Your sacrifice is not the key. Faith is the key. Trust in the Lord, so stand in the place where you can find focus on trusting in God, not mourning their every decision. Faith needs focus on what makes it strong, not the distraction of everything wrong. That's a hard decision but it's a faith decision. My family's not seen my dad in over 17 years. He went one way and we went the other way. Other than to pray for him whenever God put him on our heart, that was it. 17 days ago, coincidentally, my dad walked through this front door being a born again, believing on Jesus man, free from alcohol, from all of his addictions, a changed man. Here's a picture right now. Take a look at this. Yes, it's like a resurrection from the dead. My mom died this year and was welcomed into heaven and now my dad was raised up from the dead. God's power. Nothing is impossible with God. He started going to AA about three years ago and with the help of some mentors began to get encouragement in living his life for God. Now he helps other alcoholics who are hopeless by sharing his story and telling them that God has answers for them. Imagine this, that God has great results for them if they choose to believe, choose to receive. The youngest of 13 children, my dad was just a young man when his mom became very sick. In her final hours on earth, she wrote a letter to all of her children. She quoted Acts 
chapter 16, verse 31, that says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved, and your household. She believed that promise. Her letter was not just her goodbye, but evidence of her faith that God would save her kids. And here's the amazing thing. Even though some were living like my dad, broken lives in the grip of addiction, they all came to Jesus. Not one was lost, just like this guy. Put that picture up again, just like this guy. Even in her final hours, Grandma Dorothy was able to pray with results. Some of you right now are saying, I'm desperate to pray with results. You may have a lost son, a lost daughter. God's no respecter of persons. You've got all the righteousness you need in Jesus Christ. You can pray with results. Your faith pleases God. Is it a little faith? No problem. Put it to work and let, it, let that faith grow while you get results. Religious cliches don't cut it, my friend. They don't get kingdom results, so drop them. Some of the best prayers recorded in the Bible were not fancy, long, or religious sounding, but they got results, outcome. Some were instant, some were progressive. Some of the results were over days and some were over years. I've said this many times, but once again, it's critical in the context of this conversation. What you tolerate, you can never change. Don't tolerate ignorance of God's truth. God wants you to have his answers more than you even want his answers, his solutions, his provision. Get the truth, believe the truth, pray the truth. You are an agent of the truth and God has called you to pray the truth through Jesus Christ. That's the only righteousness any of us have. It's Jesus. Trust in Jesus and let his power flow through you. Heavenly results here on earth is the will of God, but we must throw the switch, folks. We got to pray. We must use our faith, no matter how small it is, to honor God and throw the switch of decision for his will, God's will, here on earth. Faith is the key to you being able to pray with results. That makes it all about him and not about you. Faith in God is all about Christ in us, the hope of glory or the hope of results, heavenly results. Oh, how easy it is to make it all about our performance instead of his holiness. In Colossians 2, Paul the apostle said this, he said, you're making your religious rules of devotion about the outward appearance. All you're managing to do is indulge the flesh and dishonor God with what? Our religious rituals. We don't want to do that. We're not going to do that. Let's never do that. Let's be intentional about the repetition in our lives so that the faith, our faith in God will grow and grow and grow. Why? So we can pray with results. Let's be intentional with our faith right now. Let's pray this again, thoughtfully, focused, reverently, with all that we've learned over these past four segments of this series from God's Word. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.